In today's video, we're going to make this notch effect. Welcome back to The Hive School, where we make videos to help you one up your live event production workflows. Over the course of the last few weeks, we've created videos that help you learn particles in Notch, and also how to make iMag effects in Notch. Today, we're going to combine those two subjects and look at making particle-based iMag effects. If you're new to Notch and you haven't watched either of those videos, then I'd encourage you to give them a go before coming back to this one, so I'll help provide a foundation as to what we're going to do here. When creating an effect based on a camera input, it's helpful to have similar footage to the shots you're going to be wanting to apply your effect to when your show is live. If you're working for an artist, try and get a previous line cut of one of their shows. For this tutorial, I've simply grabbed a clip from Storybox. Let's drop our clip into the node graph, then move on to preparing our particle system. You'll recall from our Notch Particles tutorial that every particle system begins with a particle root. I'm also going to add an image emitter and a point renderer. Remember, in a particle system, if you don't add a renderer, it doesn't matter how creative you are with the rest of your system, you won't see anything. For this reason, as I start to build out my particle setup, I typically always add a point renderer first so I can see immediately what's going on. You can always change your render node to something else later. Now let's take our footage and pass it into the video node input on our image emitter. You should now see your footage in the viewport rendered to square particles. It's a start. The first thing I notice is our footage appears to be squashed on the x-axis. Although we've given the image emitter 69 footage, it's rendering those particles in a square. By default, our image emitter is scaled to 1 by 1. We can restore the correct aspect ratio by changing the x scale to 1.778 which is the ratio between 16 and 9. You can verify this by dividing 16 by 9, you'll get 1.778. We've covered aspect ratios in more detail in some of our other videos, but it's a topic we keep revisiting. I'm thinking maybe we need to create a dedicated video about them. Let us know in the comments if you think you'd find this useful. Technically, this is a footage-driven particle effect, but I've got to say it's not very exciting, so let's improve this a bit. Something that feels like a bit of a magic trick when working with footage and particles is to bring some of the movement of the video into your particle system. We can do that with the optical flow node. Pass your footage into it and then wire that into the motion video input on the image emitter. Immediately, this is going to look a lot more dynamic. I want to refine this effect further by having the particles represent just our guitarist, whilst ignoring the distracting background. To achieve this, I've used NVIDIA's background removal tools to isolate the guitarist before feeding him into the image emitter. Let's start by creating two video nulls after our footage and passing it into both of them to create copies. On the bottom null, we'll apply an NVIDIA virtual background node and generate a mat. We can view the result by shift-clicking that null. Next, we'll take that mat and pass it into the alpha image input on the top video null. The final step is to connect this to the image emitter. To remove the existing connection, you can use Control shift and left-click. Let's replace the clean camera input with our masked version. We still want the context of the background, but not generated in particles. In previous tutorials, we've used an image 2D node to draw flat footage to our viewport. However, this method would place our footage in front of our particle system. To manipulate the position of our footage in 3D, we need to use an image plane node. When you add one to your node graph and pass your footage in, you'll see that like your image emitter, your image is squashed again. You could scale the X to 1.778 like we did before, but the image plane node has a faster way of achieving this. Go to the aspect-based scaling parameter and set that to scale x and you should see that we're back in 16.9 again. So we're now working in 3D, it's going to be useful to set our viewpoint. For this you'll need a camera, add one to your node graph and press 0 on your keyboard to look through it. Your viewport should go black but that's just because the camera's entered at world 0 and you're looking past your particles and footage. Move it back to minus 3 on the z-axis and everything should start to look like a proper camera effect. If you're enjoying the content and want to help us keep creating, consider supporting us on Ko-fi. Your contributions, big or small, go a long way to helping us bring you more of these kinds of videos. Head over to ko-fi.com forward slash hive school to show your support. Thanks so much for helping us make all of this possible. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. We're getting there. 
but I still think we can do better. Our square particles aren't particularly aesthetic, so let's make them softer. You can grab a soft circle that Notch provides by double-clicking on the resources panel and navigating to the Notch folder in your documents, and then into sample projects. This could be applied to the texture parameter of your point renderer. The way the particles hang around in midair after they've been generated doesn't feel particularly natural, so let's add some gravity. The SPH effector adds fluid simulations to your particles, although the default settings aren't totally what we're looking for as we're back to having particles flying everywhere. Now, because I spent some time working on this while I was designing this tutorial, I know that if we turn the gravity up to 10 and the particle weight down to 0.3, we'll get something that feels really nice to me. The thing about all this though is you're the designer, so have a play with all the different parts of the node graph to see which bits you want to change yourself. Back at the start, I mentioned that I'll always use the point renderer to get things set up and working. While it's still doing what we want, I'm going to add a line connection renderer for more visual interest. As the name suggests, it draws lines between the particles, I'm going to reduce the particle use amount so that it's drawing less lines. It's very close now to what we set out to create. The final touch is adding some glow to our particles. Glow is a post effect and if we pair in that to our root node, it'll apply glow to our entire scene. You'll notice that this almost wipes everything out, even if we reduce the intensity. What we really want to do is apply just to the particles themselves. To achieve this, we'll add a render layer to the scene and then unhook our particle root from the root node and make it a child of the render layer. The render layer renders all its child nodes as a separate compositing chain. This way, when we add our glow node to the render layer, it'll only affect our particles and not the entire scene. All that's left now is to adjust our glow settings to better integrate with our background layer. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration into particles and camera effects. If you've been patching along with us, why not share your results in the show and tell section on the Hive School Discord? And if we saved you some time, please consider supporting us on our new Kofi page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Take care.